welcome all uh, to our presentation so i'll uh, just uh, give you a brief outline of what we are covering today topic for uh, today's presentation is uh, urban transportation the way forward challenges and opportunities and uh, mr banat uh and what we'll be doing is we'll be uh, speaking elaborating on ways to maximize non fare box revenue and improve the monetization of infrastructure for a rail metro project to make it more profitable and this we are planning to do through end to end multimodal green e mobility as a service feeder transit integration for commuters and freight boosting metro rail capacity utilization so we'll go through this uh, how we are planning to do this so uh it's uh, the presentation uh, is broken down into five uh, uh contents it is the first will be introduction about uh, the pune metro line 3 then the problem statement we have we have worked on for this uh, presentation the solutions we have put together then a recent industry announcement which uh, really support the whole solution and uh, we'll have a conclusion of the entire uh, solution so uh, a brief overview about pune metro uh, line 3 uh, uh, it's uh, this is like uh, it begins from hinjewadi it hub uh, then it uh, passes through aun baner balewadi and then it ends in shivaji nagar it has almost 23 stations man is the main uh, main station for this pune metro line 3 and uh, it is expected to be completed sometime between uh, financial year 23 24 and uh, the process for it has already uh, started uh, so uh, this has been designed in a very sustainable way pune metro line 3 uh, this is uh, uh, like it it has adequate parking space bus stops for citizens uh, a ticketing counter with multiple options so that the ticketing is very fast uh, safety and convenience is taken care of uh, it has digital displays uh it also works through mobile app cctv coverage for safety of passengers it has integrated services like uh, shopping and retail uh, atm as well as food malls and uh, in train services like entertainment wifi uh, etc and it also offers a very good connectivity to uh, other metro lines which is line 1 and line 2 and uh, it has it is also going to offer uh integrated uh, you can say direct access to offices through integrated feeder services that we will see how we are actually planning to design uh so there are some uh, very important digitization uh, uh efforts that have been done for this pune metro line 3 that uh, it has uh, mainly it has automated trains uh, high speed trains with just uh, within just 2 minutes set ways it has predictive maintenance uh sensor based monitoring uh, through smart cmms uh, to uh, really find the faults if there are any and really uh, diagnose them without any issues to the citizens then it is also going to be a green building uh, like uh, the, the with rooftop solar and, and energy which will offer energy savings to reduce carbon footprint and it's also going to uh, have rainwater harvesting uh, integrated apart from that it it has open loop uh, afc Uh, for integrated ticketless travel and uh, BIM integrated building from design to maintenance. Uh, then uh, about sustainability uh, and resource management, it is taking care of uh, that through green buildings. Again, uh, we have seen then carbon credits, uh, which will help uh, through which will it will gather through saving of fuel, reduce pollution, and uh, uh, solar rooftops. It is also uh, going to implement uh, rainwater harvesting. like uh, and uh, have a very good water resource management for storm water and drainage systems then uh, it's going to be uh, having taking care of co uh, comfort and privacy of the citizens by sound absorbent cushioning throughout its uh, lanes uh, throughout its lines uh, of 23 stations that is there with noise barriers and view cutters etc which will improve uh, the whole uh, uh, view uh, for the citizens and it's also uh integrated the delivery of healthcare is also integrated within it we'll see that how it can be done as we go ahead and uh, it is also part of a uh, green commitment uh, of pune metro line 3 like it is going to be accessed uh, uh, as uh, from the indian uh, point of view for the green building 
uh, certification. It is just a, a equivalent to the international lead certification uh, that is uh, given. So uh, that that is the commitment Pune Metro li Rail Line Three has towards uh, ensuring that the entire project is made totally green. Uh, rainwater harvesting is also an important part, uh, which can be uh, used for very good resource management of water, etc. And since since it has 23 almost 23 stations, so uh, that will be uh, a very very important and very crucial part uh, for the entire Pune Metro Line Three to make it make the project more greener as such. Uh, then uh, we come to the problem statement uh, that we are really working on. Uh, like uh, the issue that are, that is facing for almost all, all the railways and metro rails uh, worldwide is uh, incomplete capacity utilization. Then uh, there is also a uh, need of multiple non-fare revenue streams for sustainability. Then uh, uh, there is also a need for electric transit for end-to-end -end electric transit for commuters and freight, which is missing right now. Like uh, even if uh, transit happens for commuters uh, by trains, then again. Uh, commuters are using uh, fossil fuel based vehicles to reach home or office. Uh, so that is one of the problems. Then freight transit through metro rail is really absent right now. Very rarely it is done. Then uh, so that is a, that can be a good revenue stream. Then a need to integrate with new e-mobility services like uh, of course feeder e-mobility uh, e services, autonomous vehicles, uh, hydrogen trains that are coming up or hyperloop that will be coming up drone taxis, 5G, IoT. So these new, uh, new services will need to be integrated uh, with the metro rail so that they don't compete with the metro rail going ahead. So uh, that can be very useful to actually increase the capacity utilization. So uh, uh, now in the step to do this, uh, how to do this, we are really thinking about uh, metro rail as an equivalent of the mobile uh, uh, phone uh, ecosystem analogy where all the services have converged uh, today in one mobile and uh, that's how we really look at uh, to find a solution for metro rail also where we want metro rail to be the central point of all these services as we go ahead that will ensure its, its sustainability as well as it will ensure the inclusion of all kinds of citizens also uh, in the success of metro rail because uh, in some parts the metro rail is facing a lot of uh, resistance because of its huge investments that are required and so it will be very crucial if we are able to offer all of these services to the citizens like freight emergency services we have already seen how railways are useful for oxygen transport uh, during covid 19 second wave then uh, it can it can be a solar energy aggregator uh, it can even be a bio waste consumer uh, for local bio uh, to generate biogas base electricity and uh, use it for self-consumption. It can be a utility partner for water and waste transport. Uh, then it can also be uh, and uh, you know, ensure all electric commuter transport end to end. It can also enable e-mobility and charging on the, any other stations. Uh, it can also be, uh, uh, you know, integrator of autonomous vehicles at, as we go ahead. And it can also integrate uh, Hyperloop and drones. Uh, because they go hand in hand when whenever they are implemented. So this is how we see the metro rail ecosystem, just uh, similar to mobile ecosystem. So uh, that will ensure its sustainability sustainability in the coming decades. So uh, typical uh, smart city sectors, as you are aware uh, today, uh, like uh, they they are most important is transportation, of course. Then there is uh, connectivity. Then there is fleet management. Uh, then uh, there is uh, environmental monitoring, energy management, and waste management, water management. So you can see we are already touching uh, all these points which are important for smart cities uh, earlier on and uh, as also we progress in the presentation. So it's really we are on track with uh, what everybody else is working on and uh, uh, this will really ensure the success. So uh, I think one of the first revenue streams we want, Metro Rail, uh, to really take up going ahead is it can be an energy aggregator for the smart city wherein uh, it can enable solar rooftops, it can enable uh, small wind rooftops, it can even enable battery energy storage and uh, even biogas plants like uh, a metro station is a huge 
uh, you can say real estate and it goes through the central parts of the cities so uh, you can really make good use of this real estate and uh, probably uh, be even biogas aggregators to uh, really re reduce ghg emissions in the smart city work with the local uh, municipalities or utilities uh, that can really enable uh, uh, digestion of the local bio waste and generation of biogas which can be used for electrical electricity generation and that can be used for self consumption as well as e mobility charging so this is one of the revenue stream in the future that metro rail can really think of uh so this is uh, explained in more detail here like every station can be an energy aggregator and uh, really have a new revenue revenue stream on its cards apart from the normal uh, fare box revenues then another revenue stream is it can be a end to end e mobility service provider uh, for commuters and freight so instead of uh, you know looking at uh, uh, like the the you can say feeder lines as competitors you can integrate them very well with your system like uh, you can have uh, cars you can have buses you can have uh, even freight transport which can be integrated with the metro stations and uh, that can uh, in a single ticket you can give a end to end transport and that will really ensure that uh, you have additional revenue streams and you get more uh, cus you get more uh, customers or commuters as well as freight to use your end to end system so that will ensure more revenues uh then again typical e mobility sectors you can see they are passenger vehicles charging infrastructure and uh, charging networks charging station management so these are some of the uh, uh, different avenues you can get into once you think about uh, e mobility as uh, a feeder line integration so these are some uh, you can say ancillary industries you can get into uh, metro rail use your uh, real estate of uh, railway stations that you have pan uh, pan city and it will again add a new revenue stream then apart from that freight uh, can be a very good revenue stream you have uh, once you are able to integrate uh, the freight transport you can easily do water transport uh, then you can do roro trains we have already seen how uh, trains were uh, really useful to transport oxygen pan india in the covid second wave so that can also be really utilized as a social service as well as a, a good revenue stream generator uh you can even have oxygen plants uh, within your station some of the stations where you have a spare space so that can also be really useful for not just for uh, revenue generation but also as a social use case for the cities you operate in so freight can really be a very big revenue generation uh, which can be done at night when you are not doing commuter transport so you you really utilize uh, so that's where we are thinking you can uh, really nicely use your entire capacity generate revenue and really avoid uh, your assets staying idle for a long time like half of the day the assets are lying idle so you can really utilize it 24 uh, by 7 uh, then uh, you can uh, as we go ahead we, we have to uh, think about integrating autonomous vehicles also they are already into their uh, third generation right now you can see from this chart uh like they are already into uh, their uh, highly automated third generation which will be completed the testing for this will be completed by this year end in hamburg germany uh and then uh, they'll be i think within next 5 years they'll uh, be ready with the uh, uh, fourth and fifth fully autonomous uh, generation uh, fully autonomous driving where no driver is required so we really th have to think about this how we integrate uh, autonomous vehicles and uh, so that you have a end to end transit electric transit going ahead and this is going to be a big uh, uh, revenue generate generator like the market by 2026 for autonomous vehicles is going to be uh, more than uh, around 500 billion today it is just around 50 billion so uh, i think it, it's a right time we think about how to integrate autonomous vehicles and this can be really useful for citizens as well as uh, it will avoid uh, you know autonomous vehicle getting in competition full competition with metro rail so uh, start thinking about uh, integrating them as soon as possible then uh, these are some of the uh, uh, international organizations uh, automotive organizations etc working with autonomous uh, electric vehicles so uh, you can see like uh, this is very important as we go ahead then uh there is another revenue stream uh, which we are working on wherein 
uh, this is like uh, it it satisfies two or three different uh, requirements like the, there is a emergency response management requirement on platforms as well as feeder lines where uh, suppose there is a blackout then uh, you have to take care of the citizens so this is a very unique uh, new uh, product made by roots in, roots in, in india in collaboration with aws germany wherein uh, you can offer citizens uh, these fully off grid uh, solar solar enabled uh, uh, waiting areas which have a uh, which have a e paper screen which have lights and uh, which have charging usb charging as well as uh, fast chargers etc it has a battery system so uh, in case of such emergency situations citizens are fully informed they have uh, they uh, they have a lo- like a waiting area they assign they ha- they can even have a speaker a speaker system here for announcements for displays etc what is happening when the next train will arrive and uh, also a proper lighting so uh, these two couple of solutions uh, can be really very good for emergency response and uh, through the display we can also think about advertisement revenues that can be generated this again uh, can be a very good uh, revenue stream as well as uh, emergency response uh, provider for citizens then uh, we uh, we also need to think about uh, this is of course a bit futuristic wherein uh, hydrogen trains are also coming up very fast and uh, at the moment we can uh, of course they are very costly at the moment but then we can think of them as uh, again a part of emergency response systems wherein uh, suppose you have a blackout and uh, even your electric uh, electric uh, uh, main uh, grid goes down for example at times then you can think about this uh, like keeping one of the hydrogen trains as backup it doesn't require uh, any any electricity it runs on fuel cells so that can really be useful to provide some kind of relief to the customers uh, if there's a fault also on the railway tracks you can still isolate and then run one of these trains to take care of uh, emergency situations etc Uh, so uh, these trains are coming in fast and i think it they will be pretty big in next 5 years then of course drones uh, drones are are going to be there in the next uh, five, i think 3 uh, to 5 years uh, they are already being used for small parcel as well as courier etc courier service and i think electric drones will be very useful when hyperloop uh, project between bombay and pune gets implemented for example like pe- a person traveling between bombay pune in 15 to 20 minutes will not want to again waste one hour in local traffic so i think there is a use case for drones you can ha- have drone pads within metro stations so when a person comes there he can just take a drone and reach his home or reach his office so uh, this is another emerging sector we have to think about and uh, with these all of these electric feeder line integration and your own main service being electric carbon uh, trading will be another very big and very useful revenue stream that you can think of and uh, recent industry announcements uh, that we have all seen is uh, of course reliance is investing uh, more than 75000 crores into all of these sectors like solar photovoltaics uh, storage battery electrolyzer factory and fuel cell so i think we are on the right track when we say like uh, we need to integrate these services uh, we need to think about these services and uh, everybody is looking at them as a new source of revenue generation and that's what that's the direction metros uh, metro railways and railways also have to look at not uh, not look at them as competitors but really look at them as a new uh, revenue stream providers same thing with siemens uh, you have seen like siemens is also getting into big time into electric vehicles 5g cloud and hydrogen so uh, you know we are on the right track we also need to think in that direction to integrate these services uh, we are we are planning similar uh, integration in the man station you see here which is uh, one of the main stations for pune metro line 3 and uh, uh, what we are trying to do is really integrate uh, make this as a, a green station or as a demo station for pune metro line 3 Uh, we are working on uh, solar pv as well as uh, some of the biogas use cases uh, it can be energy aggregator as well uh, it will integrate multimodal electric uh, first mile last mile feeder services it can integrate commuter and freight transit uh, going ahead uh, we are working on use cases for autonomous vehicle as well as uh, getting ready for uh, you know uh, various use cases for 
drone taxi and how to integrate hyperloop uh, customers etc which can use these different services it can it will also be a big part of uh, integrating with local utility it is part of pmrda already and uh, that way it can really uh, help to integrate and provide uh, healthcare services oxygen transport water and waste transport also uh, which is a, a kind of a symbiotic service and uh, of course we are also integrating the emergency response passenger waiting green concept it is fully off grid so that is a new concept we are also integrating to really make uh, the entire uh, month as a demo station for pune metro line 3 and uh, in a, uh, as a conclusion uh, that's uh, really uh, what we come at is we need to uh, promote electric transit end to end for commuters and freight only commuters is not going to work because freight is a big part and freight is also a very huge uh, revenue generator so that way we have to really look at it uh, it is uh, so this entire solution really promotes a use of green energy so uh, that's uh, what is happening worldwide and that will also save us a lot of uh, expenses uh, or, or you can say or operating expenses as we go ahead so it's again a symbiotic uh, use of the uh, solution then we are also promoting first mile last mile multimodal integration we are promoting green buildings uh, through this solution and also taking care of bio waste to reduce ghg emission that is one of the big emissions which really affect our climate we can uh, really reduce them at source like a city, if a city is producing bio waste we can tackle it locally it doesn't have to be transported it doesn't have to be uh, you know dumped anywhere so uh, that way we can really reduce ghg emissions locally and then uh, we are also uh, scaling up uh, helping to scale up renewable energy and boosting the re industry with integrating the rooftop solar so that is also a possibility and uh, we are getting ready for future tech integrations and uh, with all this we are really supporting the local uh, industries we are supporting reducing the oil imports for india and really uh, you know uh, working along with the local government goals of making india and making india self reliant so i think that is very crucial for uh, all, any project success you work with the local government and you work with the local citizens and be inclusive to everybody so i think uh, in a just uh, uh, that is the whole conclusion this project uh, has already been uh, presented in uh, igf india smart grid uh, foundation and it has also been selected in the top 10 concepts uh, from among global 80 entries uh for the smart move challenge by ministry of housing and urban affairs uh in march uh, in feb march this year uh like one of the uh, uh, uh shortlisting uh, member was also oxford uh, university so uh, this is really uh, what we want to go ahead and implement so uh, thanks everybody uh, for uh, uh, listening uh, to our presentation and uh, me and akshay sharma will be very happy to receive your uh, comments to receive your feedback and uh, this is uh, our uh, email and phone number if you want to get in touch with us uh, apart from uh, pune metro line 3 we are also open to implement this in uh, any other metro uh, project pan india so uh, we'll also we are also open to share our expertise uh, for these uh, you know multiple revenue streams with you thank you very much